The topic of the following talk is Django ORM Be Careful and presented by Tim Xu. Please join me in welcoming speaker. Hello everyone. Thanks for your coming. My talk is Django ORM Be Careful. It's my pleasure to bring this topic to you. Let's begin with who I am. I'm Tim, a lead engineer at iChef. iChef brings the best software to restaurants and let restaurants enjoy the best technology and enhance their efficiency. I recently learned cooking. The picture in the background is my recent work. Please feel free to chat with me about iChef and the cookie and the Python and the Django. Since behind Django ORM are important, I will show some bug that is very hard to understand unless you know the underlying database. And I hope you enjoy this talk. The first problem I called is bloated duplication. It retrieves data from the database more than you want. It let your program run extremely slow on production or will produce too much data. This problem may stop your service. We first explain the model and some exist data in the database. This example is an online store. We have an order model and an item model. Item model has a foreign key point to order model. Each order has multiple items. We have two orders and five items in our existing database. The first order relates to three items. The second order relates to two items. Now we want to find valuable orders. How do we find orders with prices of more than $10? Django provides double under the girl syntax to query related tables. The query did find the correct data, but it returns a wrong number of data. It re returns three orders, not one. Let's see what happened. To know why, here is the SQL generated by Django. We can see the filter mechanism uses SQL join. And here is how the SQL join works. We get data from items and orders. Database preserve items prices higher than ten dollars, and join items and orders. Due to there are three items mapped to one order, that's why the result has three data. The solution is quite simple. Just add a distinct method. The underlying SQL will use select distinct keyword to remove duplication. That's only one rule in the result data. If you see double underscore, please clarify the relationship and be careful of the duplication. Maybe you should add a distinct after your query set. For another example, I explain more models and data in our shop. Here are models for customer, contact, and order. Contact model and order model have foreign key point to the customer model. And we have two customers, Alice and Bob. Alice has two contact information, Bob has no contact information. Each customer has one order. Now, we have a requirement. Attach order count and the contact time to customer model. You can use annotate and the count to aggregate related data. But after the annotation, there are two orders for Alice. It's not correct. Alice has just one order. Let's see what the underlying SQL is. The query is quite complex, and we see join again. Join can put related data into one table, and the group by can aggregate data and apply a function to a group of data. Now, let's see some simplified version of the queries to understand what happened. We first join customer table and the order table. Each customer has their own order. So the final result, there is one rule for Alice. Now, we join the contact table. Due to Alice has two contact information, 
in the final joint result, there are two rows of data for Alice. Alice data are duplicated. Now we add goodbye in the final SQL. Due to the source data are duplicated, the counting is not correct. We should be careful while annotating related tables. How do we correct annotate related fields? Uh, we may use distinct and subquery. We set distinct to true in the count aggregation function to solve the problem. After this, you can see the final SQL has a distinct inside the count, and it will distinct it will remove the duplicate values. Subquery also works. We can use subquery in a more complex situation. Subquery is quite useful, and you should try it in your project. The next problem I will show is the order by problem. Order by will add extra field in selection and group by. This bug is hard to discover. Now, we start to demo bug introduced by order by. There are two orders in AI database. We sort orders by related items price. Don't, don't ask me why I, I want to do that. Due to we write double underscore in the order by parameter, we know that joy is in the underlying SQL, and we cleverly add the distinct master in the query set. Yeah, distinct is what we just learned before. But the final count of order becomes three, not one. What happened? There are only two orders in the database. Now, let me show the SQL without distinct. It did use join as we expected, and produced duplicate rows of data. Now, let's see what happened when we added the distinct method to the query set. Distinct is added to the SQL correctly. However, there is one extra color in the selection list. We don't know why the item's price appears in the final SQL. Due to the distinct also consider price, the distinct result is very strange. Maybe we can regard it as bug, and uh, we, we, we stop using Jenko RN, we use raw query and uh, we remove the extra price column from the selection list. If you do this, your database will raise an error. The database says order by expression must appear in the selection list. So, if Django doesn't add the price column for you, the SQL is not valid for most of the database and no database can execute the query. Wow, why? Uh, think of the logic flow of a SQL query. The flow is from top to down. When you ask a SQL query, data first load by the front keyword, filtering by where, and apply aggregate function to group the data. After data is almost ready, columns are filtered and the duplicate rows are removed by distinct. The final step is ordered by. If we want to sort by column X, then this column X should be kept. That's why the database didn't allow order by a field didn't appear before. You may be curious why not order by in the beginning. It's because of performance. The ordering of data is not possible to keep during processing. You may hear about hash join, which is fast but lost the ordering. So that's why the column of the byte must appear in distinct and group by. Now let's see a similar situation for aggregation. The query set is first ordered by ID, and we use values and annotate to group by price. We want to know the count of each price. There are three values of price in our item table. We thought the result should be three rows. However, because we order by ID, ID is added to selection list and group by. So the result is not what we expected. 
we thought we grew by we grew growth by price, but the underlying sequel didn't grow growth by price. It did grow by price and ID. Due to there are five distinct ID, so the group result is five rows. Think of the logic flow of a SQL query. Order by is the last step. You can only use order by after distinct and the group by. Furthermore, if your model has set up ordering in meta, all your query set for this model will add an extra order by while you evaluate the result. If you don't want it, call order by result argument to clean or implicit order by. Now we talk about rest conditions. If we access one row at the same time, rest condition usually happens. We first introduce our sample model and the sample data. We have an account model with a name field and a balance field. Balance begins at zero dollars and the account is named Tommy. We discuss the scenario for deposit ten dollars and withdraw ten dollars at the same time. Okay. Here are two processes. The left one deposit the money and the right one withdraw money. If the deposit and the withdraw didn't overlay, the final balance becomes zero. However, if the deposit and the withdraw did overlay, the result balance may go wrong. In the example, the two process all load the original balance into memory. The process sells balance later will override balance returned by another process. In the example, process 1 stores 10 to the row and overwrite that process to writes. This problem calls lost update. Lost update in memory and the long processing time calls lost update. We should use a lack of atomic operation to avoid the length. Django avoids. Django provides select update to lux rule, that means your filtering rule. Select update should be used with the transaction. After the transaction finish, the lock is released. Django uses Context Manager to enable the transaction. Just wrap your code block inside transaction.atomic. The first process executes select update as a lock to the database rule. The second process blocks while executing the left update until the first process commits transaction. Sometimes you don't want to use transactions. You just don't need rollback and dislike the overhead of transactions. You can use F expression. It can refer model field without loading it into memory. SQL ensures the operation be atomic. The previous example all acts the same field, balance, so it is easier to identify problems by searching the code. But this example is not so clear. While process 1 is updating the account's profile page, and the process 2 is withdrawing money, things still go wrong. Process 1 didn't touch the balance field directly, but it, it did override the balance field. Let's see why. In the top code block, we just set the name and save it. But while you see the underlying SQL for the save method, even you intend to save the name Jerry only, Django didn't know it. Django knows the whole row of data, including balance and the name, and the saves the name and the balance back, so the balance may be polluted. Now, we tell Django to skip balance is one possible way to skip it. We can pass update fields to save master and specify a list of field name we want to save. With it, we won't accidentally save all data back. If you want the code easier to read, you may write your own update name master and put attribute modification and save method together. While you start to utilize transactions, 
things may go wrong. If you are unaware of the isolation level, I will show you what happens if you are in a multi-process environment or microservice, whatever. A transaction can ensure data integrity. You can roll back data while something goes wrong. Other transactions don't see data modification until the transaction commit. Now let's see a simple design everyone can make. Let's see this sequence diagram. It shows an application save data to a database first, and then notify a worker to load and process it. Without the transaction, this flow is correct. But what if we consider a transaction? Now we wrap a transaction in our app for data integrity. Our app saves data and sends the model ID before transaction commits. If a worker starts to process data before the transaction commits, it will not see the latest data. Here's the code. We wrap code in transaction and the code delay inside a transaction. This example uses salary. If you are not familiar with salary, you can just think task.delay as a HTTP request. The problem happens when a text starts before transaction commits. To solve the problem, just use an uncommit hook. You set your callback function in uncommit. Django will call it for you while the transaction commit. With this, your distributed system can handle data correctly. Next, we talk about n plus one problem. It may be the most common problem for every Django programmer. n plus one problem slows down your application while processing a large amount of data and issue a lot of unnecessary SQL queries. Now, let me show some detail. The left hand side is a simple loop to iterate items. Each loop access order via a foreign key. While the loop starts to iterate, we fetch all items we want. The corresponding SQL is on the right tab. While we access order, Django helps us fetch data via another SQL query. If there are n items, the second SQL will ask you n times. Due to the need to send SQL query across a network, too many SQL query is a waste of time. Django can help us get related data at the beginning. We add the select related function code, and the underlying SQL will help us. We can see Django utilize join again to bring related data. By this, the total count of SQL query reduced to 1. And every item that order that packed is retrieved by the data queried by this SQL, and we don't use extra SQL to do anything. Select related reduce round trip time, but may cause a slightly slower join query. A plus one problem is usually cause performance problem, but it's better to benchmark first. Use Django assert max non queries in PyTest to ensure no one introduce n plus one problem in the future. There is also another function called prefetch. It is used in a different situation, and uh, with this function, you can reduce a lot of SQL count in your Django program. Finally, abstraction is not perfect, and you always need to know more about the underlying structure. You need to learn detail about SQL syntax, transactions, and the locks to avoid bugs. Maybe the best way is to write your test carefully. I hope you can enjoy Django more in the future. Thanks for your coming. All right, so let's move to the Q&A session. So let's look at the first question. Uh, to Tim, if using too much transaction, is it going to break performance? Okay, uh, I think 
if I use too much translation, it it may hurt performance. Yeah, yes, it did. So uh, every time we will think carefully whether we should use the translation, and uh, sometimes you should actually need translation, and uh, sometimes maybe we can use another kind of lock, maybe Redis. So our you think you can just use some F expression. So uh, we won't always use transaction. We will think some scenario and uh, carefully. And uh, if uh, uh, if we and then even we use lock, we can lock too uh, big. We should lock uh, maybe a single rule. Yeah, you should, you should not lock too much rule. So you you need to uh, read a lot of document and uh, understand uh, very much about lock and the transaction. But if you think you need your transaction, I think you just you just use and uh, enlarge your database. All right, thank you. And the next question is: If my operations is not atomic and race conditions might happen, what might be a better way to investigate and find out there is a race condition? Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, let me let me let me see it. Sorry. Um. Uh, how to find race condition? Uh, is a good question. Um, I uh, I I will provide some experience about how we find uh, race condition. Uh, if we if we know if we know there are there are chance there are two process, uh, will access the same rule. If we know that, we will write unit test and uh, we use multi threaded. We you we write multi thread in unit test and we will ask you a code block maybe one hundred times, one thousand times and in our unit in our UT environment. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a better way. And it it, it can find a lot of problem. Yeah, so I write multi thread unit test to find it. Alright. Yep, thank you so much. And there's another sure. question. Uh are these pitfalls also can be met in other ORM libraries or language? Ah, oh, pardon. Ah, uh, are these pitfalls oh, can be okay? Yeah, uh, maybe you mean uh some drawback here are uh, only for Django. Uh, I think. I think a lot of our ORM has this kind of problem, because I think the abstraction is weak. If some or oh, did some uh like um mm, after I read some documentation, I think some or oh, did has some problem. Yeah, not I think not only for Django, but I think Django is good. Uh, except this part I present today, I think Django help us a lot. So I so I think I needed its presentation to tell you this kind of part is should be careful. Yeah. All right. Yep. Thank you. And if there is no more question, uh, okay, then thank you so much, Tim. Now, Tim will move to the Mingo launch area in Geller Town, and he has prepared a live demo there. So please go and check it out. And please go there okay. and ha have a talk with Tim if you have any questions. The session has come to an end, and thank you for your listening. The next session will start at 11.35. Now, let's take a break. <laughs>